Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to something a little bit different. We resume our Sanctuary development updates. I'm joined once again, once again by Nine. And uh, a new face for some of you, but if you're an OG, you will recognize his voice from the Nomads cast we did a long, long time ago. It is Special Bread. Gentlemen, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. Hello, hello. Guile. Hello. Thanks for having us again. As always, always. Good to be here. Uh, what have you got for us today? What is new in Sanctuary? What's been going on? It's been a while since we did an update. Certainly has. So what we've got for you today is we have a pile of goodies. So we've got some presentations, we've got screenshots, we've got video clips, and we've got some special stuff at the end. And we have your lovely self, Guile, for you as well. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Always right. a feature, so never a chore. Always a feature, yeah. So here we go. We've got a cool picture, development update. I'm uh, sharing my screen. So uh, essentially, let's just jump right in it. So what we're doing is because you, last time you were seen anything from us, is the Steam release, right? So yes, we indeed. So we started a game on Steam. That did super great. We got like half a million views in two weeks or something insane like that. And then I checked back later and it's just going up. Like I definitely have seen like 600,000 views on the Steam page. And it's just going up and up. And we got like tens of thousands of wish lists on there. And you know, we've got like it, I mean, who knows? I don't know why it, it's so many, but it is. So we'll just take you what we got. So it's just a testament to the need for this game, man. That yeah. there's like a hole in this space that needs to be filled. No so, question there. Yeah, and then, so since then, I just figured we'd just cover that because you've seen that. I saw my, my favorite moment was when your mouth was open and you actually <laughs> were literally jaw dropping for you. So, you know, and I, I, you know, it's stuff like that which keeps us going. So, you know, when we showed um, the trailer to Chris, like I noticed he shed a tear. He actually wiped a tear out of his eye. And so you dropped your jaw, so like, I, I know we're on the right track because that's kind of what we're here to do. We're here to make people feel them. Right, because that's what a game is for have fun. So uh, since then, I just figured we'd just cover the stuff we've done in what, like the past four or five months since then, because that was in November. And let's begin with that. So we jump into a uh, sick render. So this is outside the game, but what we see here is one of the command units in the game. So you've seen that in the trailer. You, uh, that is the guard command unit we're probably going to call them rapid deployment units or something like that and you see he's got a few more legs than usual so he's got five and here you can see him from the top oh, right beautiful and got piles of guard units so this is a giant guard space laser it deploys you can see it unfolds it's, it's got rotation -y thing here's some energy storage and in case you're wondering, you know, we got even more units. So this is um, us testing a building animation for the uh, guard. When you assist a factory, you get all these drones. And then these are actually uh, engineering stations. And you can kind of see they've got these disks where the drones are stored. And then they fly out and they oh, go I into love this it. array around the, um, around the factory, right? And here it is again. We have even more units. We've got like little Ooh, some animations. Bots. Yeah, that's the up. Well, it's like different stages of the upgrades for the yep. engineering station. We got artillery. We got this tech center uh, building. So our game has tech centers where, you, in order to unlock um, higher tier units, you need to build this building. Then you can upgrade it. It's kind of like you know, uh, like Red Alert Three or Command and Conquer. Those kind of RTS games where you need to sort of build a building, then you upgrade the units. And that's how we're doing it for now. Anyway, who knows? It's all in development. We got some transmitters. They give an area of effect bonus to all the units around them. So guard are awesome, is what we're saying. Or at least I, I get the feeling yeah. from Discord actually that there's. Yeah. I mean, all of the the, the races are, are cool, but I, there's a special kind of hype I think behind guard. I don't know whether it's because the narrative in the storyline is a bit different. Certainly, the units look pretty funky. So I think that probably has something to do with it. But uh, yeah, the, these I, are shiny models. The, the crabs. I don't know why, but we got this thing where everybody spams the crab emoji everywhere with the guards because <laughs> they're like they're like the crab faction now. I don't know, but that's how it is. Maybe that's the secret sauce. Uh, so, in case you're wondering, how have even more units. Uh, here's some aircraft. Here's some uh, radar units. This is a uh, flying like drone thing that shoots stuff, kind of like a gunship. 
Uh, that's not even all of them, but you know, um, help. Here's a here's a big boy. This is one of the larger units. That's the size of a building because he's got like two laser cannons, looking extremely uh, scary and menacing. That's um, yeah. I mean, that's not even all of the stuff. Like I had to like I had to not put in some of the units in, but it's just so many. Anyway, who cares? We're moving on to the EDA because they're the best faction. Here we got the uh, EDA commander. These are my guys. This is Here my crew. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle. Yeah. I, I know. I know. I know. He's. I know you're uh, like because you got the little EDA faction. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this one, so yeah, that's always a human choice. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah, commitment, commitment <laughs> to the cause. There we go. So, there we go. This guy, giant like uh, craft, it can hover. Here we go, another one, in case you're wondering, another image. Um, yeah, it's got like a little drone bay where it can send like its engineering drones out to build. You know, we actually like invented our own little language script to make this site. Ah, very that's nice. That's not Earth language, that's EDA speak. They're very, this is a number, like it's a serial number. That's, that's very cool. Letters. I mean, it does look yeah. a little bit like the Russians have conquered everybody, maybe. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, you know, it's like, it's got like a Greek uh, sideways sigma. Like, okay. It, it's more Greek, if anything. But, um, but like, actually, those, it's like. For, those uh, Greeks, principles. always dangerous. Got to watch out for <laughs> I them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Who knows, right? So we got some more photos of it. It's from the top, from the bottom. Uh, but in case you are wondering, we have a special thing for you, uh, which is what it looks like when it dies. Juicy. So, bang. There we go. So oh. we've been working on the um we've been working on the VFX uh, for our game. So since the trailer we've actually um had time to go through and update them all. Uh so with, they're actually even better. I and love it. like you know, and the thing is is what you can't see here is that we've um fixed the long standing issue with draw order in our VFX. And so that's why it looks great, but you know it's the kind of thing like you know we work on like the juicy stuff as well but a lot of the work goes into the background you know the performance you know the technology and stuff that's actually where most of the time goes in so that's that awesome um, yeah so moving on to the chosen we got the chosen commander we've seen him before but you know it wouldn't be um a a chosen uh, faction if we didn't blow it up so here we go Got some oh, chosen explosions. That's filthy. Yeah, well, chosen are filthy, aren't they? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're sort of like the, the sort of the cyber and extension, I suppose. If you wanted to make it one, so I and they're going to be my yeah, yeah. natural no, I, enemies I reckon, going forward. You know, I think I think we we got our factions which are made from first principles. So, of course, uh, yeah, of course. Like, you know, um, I'm going on yeah, the red so theme, but on? that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, if you had to do it, I, I would go for like God is Cyber, maybe. I don't know, because they're like yeah, yeah, I could see that. Little robot. Uh, but yeah, so what's going on there is you can see that there's little like um, sparkle things, and we're thinking yeah, I love know, the particles. Like actually, little nanobots that are escaping from the chosen uh, commander, and they actually do a bit of damage over time, that kind of stuff. So that might be a bit of a chosen trait that we're trying out. Um, and you might see it here and there in a couple of the VFX as well. So, uh, but you know, the chosen they haven't been sitting around either because they've got this guy, which is a super huge um, tier four unit. You know, I've left my mouse, so I'll just cover it up. And is he on stilts or is he hovering? He's hovering. He's hovering. He's hovering. So you know, here's the um, commander for scale. Very smart. And uh, you know, is is the view from the top. So there we go. That's the. Uh, that's what the Chosen have been up to, and you know, like so, we've seen a lot of the units uh, from the Chosen in sort of renders, but actually in the past few months they've been making it into the game. And this guy is one of the new ones which we haven't seen. That's why I picked him. And if I included all of the stuff that we put in the game, we'd be here all day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we're being selective here. Um, so that's that. And then. Um, you know, this is stuff that you've seen in the trailer, right? We're just sort of taking the outtakes and just drawing your attention to it. They've got even bigger unit. That's the kind of stuff uh, that we've got. That um, is beautiful. 
going on, and you can see that there's this uh, concept art with the nano machines. And if you were to go back and rewatch the trailer, you'd see these tanks getting disintegrated, and that's because of this like nano machine <laughs> weapon. This guy's armed with it, and kind of the concept behind it, or something we're trying to do, is um, he's literally like absorbs the um, enemies into more nano machines, so he gets bigger area of damage over time like the more units he destroys with the nano machines the more powerful he becomes so you gotta like nuke him fast or whatever very right? cool uh let's see yeah um and then uh you know an ice picture you've seen that one before but we're just setting the mood because we've got an ice map that we've been working on and um that's been made just in the past few weeks we got uh a new guy who um, we uh, brought on to make this map. I'm loving those shadows. On. That's uh... yeah. Well, you know, the joke is that this is before we actually fixed the lighting. This oh, really? All sorts of lighting bugs and issues on it. Yeah. So actually, I mean, these look great as stills. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it gets even better, and you know, so we we're just working with our technical team again to make sure that the lighting is working because there's there's some kind of issues here. Like for example, so the units are too dark. Yeah. relative to the um, thing so you know it's getting there um, yeah and then so this this environment like you know as you may know we actually style our maps after real physical places because they're sort of more authentic and they're more unique as a result and this isn't just some generic snow place this is actually styled after Lake Baikal so okay um, where's that that's why it's got these distinct kind of like that ice stuff which you see everywhere is actually not that common uh -huh. <laughs> but you can see it there and it actually is see-through um and then so with the beige cliffs and things like that that is that is what it looks like over it is there. beautiful it's pretty it's pretty interesting where they have like a frozen layer and then there's a bare rock layer yeah it's just like how is that possible but it is um yeah and then uh moving on we've actually been upgrading our forge map as well so it got bigger since the last time we've seen it it's um and the reason why is because our maps they have a playable area then they have a very wide map border so that when you zoom out you're sort of still more immersed and it's like you know yeah you're in the battlefield and stuff so those are some upgrades that we've been making and again that's just the past few weeks this is still very much work in progress and it's still got the broken lighting on it, in case you're wondering. So it's going to look even better, right? Um, let's see what the next slide is. Oh, yeah, a slight detour. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what 100,000 trees looks like at 76 frames per second. Looks fluffy. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, right? We just... Um, uh, I just I just really like this shot. I th I've actually, we've had it for a while, but I don't think I've had the chance to brag about it in front of Guile, so that's why it's here. <laughs> um, you know, and these trees, they look like this close up, so it, you know, we use some really advanced text to make it, make it possible to zoom in and out. And so you get this much detail when you're up close, and you get this much detail when you're zoomed out, and it runs at 76 frames per second. That's on, amazing. Um, our technical artist machine. So, yeah, this happened actually because he um, saw a, another game engine, you know, the Unreal Engine file, 5, some other game engine, he said, and they said, oh, you know, some guy was making a video about it, and he said, oh, you know, you could render a thousand trees, a hundred thousand trees in one scene now, and he said, <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> we could do that, but he actually said, I'm a bit skeptical, I think we could do that too. One and a half hours later, he shows this. I'm like, that's very cool how did he do that how did he do that? that's right? great so, potential though as far as engines yeah. go very exciting yeah well you know that's kind of what we're you know to be fair like credits to the unreal team because they've done like a massive engineering challenge with like their rasterizer and stuff and the reason ours works is because we made it for an rts game yeah so for example if you tried this stuff with an fps game i don't think it would work as well uh, but this tech, you know, it's great because um, we we know where the camera is going to be. You zoom in and out, so that's why it's great for us. Um, yeah, we use all sorts of tricks. These are actually like fake trees, but they look exactly the same like real trees. And it's like a anyway. Uh, so next, we we're just gonna chat about some fancy little features which you may or may not have seen in the trailer. And um, so if you notice. This map, we've actually designed it so that if you drop the water level, it opens these plateaus. So uh, this is back to that dynamic map 
thing yeah, that we've that gone over in the past. The weather, right? So yep. you heat up a map, it drops the water level, and that's just us showing it off. So uh, that is just stuff that we're just going to try out. We're going to test it out. We're going to test out all these things. So we've previously, I believe, covered freezing with you. Well, this is uh, what, like, uh, heating up the map would be if you, like, destroy the cooling system. The whole place starts kind of melting, turning into a desert. And so what we're doing is we're just designing these things in advance so that in case we have the budget, which you can help us by supporting us on <laughs> Kickstarter, uh, but in case we do, we can put these things in, we can test it out. and you Please can really do, because it's one of the things I'm most excited about. This is different well, to well, any uh, other game I've seen. I've never seen well, an RTS develop like this. Kickstarter, fellas. <laughs> The bit that uh, I'm pretty interested in this one yeah. is the idea that maybe the reclaim from all the naval battles that's sitting on the, the seabed, you can't actually like go and reclaim it until the water level is dropped. Uh, that would make it really interesting. Because it's basically it interesting. This, there's a treasure chest down there, right? And if you and want it's it... it's growing, you can... right? Yeah. It's growing over time. Yeah, and you um, you lower the water level, but then, of course, the enemy gets a reclaim as well, or he can raise it, so you send in all your engines to go reclaim that stuff, and he just drowns you. So, you know, something <laughs> like that. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so, I mean, we're, it's just all start, so, sorts of stuff that we're just exploring at the moment, because we, uh, we think there's all sorts of potential. What we're doing is we're focusing on the core stuff, which we know how to do, but there's all sorts of things which we can experiment with, and we're experimenting with as we go along. And this is one of those things. Maybe it won't work, but we think it's got a pretty good chance of working, and if it does, even if it doesn't work in every case, this is the kind of thing which is per map, so you can design the map with that in mind, and we've designed this map with that in mind. So it, we've designed, actually, it's sort of a... It map, this map can do everything, right? It can be frozen, it could be... Uh, water level could be dropped, so all sorts of things happening there. Right, and uh, you've seen this before, but we couldn't help but talk about it a bit. So, you know, uh, weather, but shattering the terrain. So, you know, when you nuke the map, it actually blows a hole in there and you can see the sort of the segments of the sphere. And, you know, maybe we'll have them actually repair themselves because the sphere is a like it's a machine. It's, a, it's not alive, but, you know, it's kind of alive. Regenerative. Right? Yeah, and it would it would actually replace these broken things so over time. You'd see like the broken ones getting ejected into the sun, and then like new ones would be like put in from the bottom, and then this thing would heal, but it wouldn't heal the ground, so yeah. the terrain, it would stay scarred, and then that way you can actually explode half the map, and then it would regenerate, but it would be a different regeneration. Yeah. So, but it wouldn't. It would make sure that you can't break your gameplay, so you can't just nuke the whole map, and then you're like, "Oh, now I can't go anywhere because everything's blown up," right? Yeah, so that's that kind of thing. So uh, you've seen it before. We've shown it in the trailer before, but you know, let's stick it in. Let's mention it again because again, this is one of those Kickstarter stretch goals. So you know, if you like this, go back us on Kickstarter. Like you know, there's a little like follow up Kickstarter button. Press it. Send it to all your friends. Gonna be great. Um, and then, you know, lastly, that was from the trailer again. Uh, we've just got a teardown kind of thing where you take a tower, you blow it up, and then it falls and it crushes everything underneath it, and it could block a passageway as well. So, strategic thing, and then you have to, like, harvest it to get rid of it. Or you could nuke it again, right? And, like, <laughs> blow, <laughs> blow, up the, blow up the wreckage into smithereens, right? So, that's, again, another thing that we're looking at for the Kickstarter, right? And that's the end of the presentation that's what we got for you today uh that's not everything which we've done we've done a lot of stuff maybe nine <laughs> wants to say more that i've missed but that's that's what we got for now uh, oh well, well, i actually don't know yeah, the bit on. that I was interested in uh, hearing a little bit more about is with the commander units that you showed. Um, you know, they obviously have some sort of abilities, like one's a hover unit and the other one doesn't even have a head. So, obviously there's some stuff going on there and they're going to be a bit different to just every commander is the same. Maybe we could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So, uh, let's just scroll back we... to the, be the best commander. <laughs> uh... So what's going on there is uh, you can see that this guy is actually on uh, hover jets, right? And um, we're just thinking about the different kind of gameplay implications, trying to get a bit more faction diversity going. Um, 
So uh, the idea here is this guy, for example, would be able to hover, which means you could go underwater right away, right? And he's got some disadvantages, so you can see he doesn't have any guns that are direct fire, but he's got these rocket pods, which would be able to shoot units, so it can still do damage, but it might not be as good as the Chosen Commando, who's got two guns, not one, but two, right? And he's just blasting, you know, anyway, I started blasting. He's like that guy, right? But these other two commanders, they're maybe a little bit more maneuverable. So the guard, he's got five legs, and one of the things we're trying, we're having a look, is he can move in any direction without needing to turn around. So that would be pretty cool. So he can be a little bit more maneuverable. Um, but again, his, he's got like little grenade launcher pods, so he might miss the units a little bit more often and things like that. So we're really trying to like look at these faction diversity things, right? And again, um, once you get some upgrades for these guys, they'll also be different. So they'll bring that up. And um, I, we talked about the chassis, so we can talk about that too. I don't yeah, know yeah. if we covered the chassis, so um, yeah, that's we've it. done that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you know, as you as you may know, like, you'll be able to upgrade these guys into even more bigger, different chassis, where you just replace the entire commander and you give it like five legs or whatever, or you make it fly or hop, like something like that, right? When the chosen guys can start hovering. Um, so, um, that's part of this whole commander thing. So, yeah. That's one of the things. Yeah, the, trying. the guard one's yeah. kind of interesting. So he he doesn't really have a front, so he can just shoot in any direction. Doesn't have to turn to shoot, and doesn't have to turn to walk. So it's a lot more maneuverable. He just walks that way, and then the, that way, and then backwards. More instantaneous yeah. responses, right? So that sounds like a bit of fun to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Imagine the uh, micro. But the micro guys will be picking the guard commander because he can do the dodging dance much better. He doesn't need to do any of that, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, absolutely, right? And then um, we're also thinking, like, each of the commanders have sort of an active ability, and these abilities are different. So the chosen commander might be able to... Um, well, we have a list of these. We haven't decided which ones are which, which ones go where which, but some of the stuff we might list off is that this guy... He might have a um, sort of a chargeable like EMP ability, right? Where he's got this little core in the middle, it's glowing, right? And then he just uh, like EMPs the units around him. Or maybe it's the EDA commander that does that, right? But it's like a thing which you take a minute or two to charge up and then you can actually use it for an advantage. And they would, each faction would have a different ability which sort of complements their play style a little bit. So, you know, again, it's a thing that... Um, you would be able to uh, just sort of bring out the differences in each faction. I'm loving that. I, I love the idea right. of more diversity because it's something I still get questions from people who are newer to SOPCOM on my videos today. They get frustrated when even at pro-level games you have a big epic match or whatever, but half of the pros are dead within seven or eight minutes because they all have to be on the front line. They all have to play in the same way because they're very similar units and if one side doesn't do it then they're going to lose advantage to the other side so you have to have those comms up on the front line in close proximity this might be an antidote to that because you'll have different play styles different you know styles of combat different styles of unit i could see that if balanced well prolonging that early game and that's a real problem with subcom games because people don't realize i show longer games on my channel and people who don't play the game, they think that that's what SOPCOM's like, when actually an average game is, you know, sub-12 minutes. <laughs> like, if you look yeah, at yeah, ladders, ladder matches. Yeah, selection effect going on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it's only the funnest games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that's one of the things we're looking into, too. So I think we mentioned uh, previously there's, like, the second win mechanics. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, so, for example, the EMP, uh, like, special ability, that's not kind of an accident that we picked uh, an ability that's like that because you can use it offensively to stun the enemy units and you go in and you bash everybody to pieces or you could use it defensively to stun the enemy units and you get out of there where you still can right so it's got a double-edged kind of it's sword thing right it, you could use it offensively you can use it defensively right um, and then the the chosen commander maybe he'll have like a dash ability where he can just like charge with on it like ahead and he just hits any units on the way and does damage to them 
but also he goes fast so if you want to escape you can charge in the opposite direction right if you find yourself getting surrounded you charge out feels so almost like it. slightly mobbery if you know what i mean a little bit of uh, kind of hero uh heroes or champions from league of legends kind of thing just with a couple of abilities here and there used at the right time could change yeah. alter the dynamic of, of fights yeah. well the, yeah. the idea is not to have many of them just like yeah, a couple yeah, yeah. of good yeah, yeah. ones yeah, because it doesn't about... want to turn into a click yeah. no exactly all, like, you don't want to micro sponge but all I, the I really APM. just want to i want to breach a wall you know there's a huge wall in front of me and my chosen commander just like punches a hole straight through it that's just going to be dope that's very cool yeah exactly right so yeah i think we're we're thinking just one ability per commander yeah right um similar to you know how other games they've got like a d gun ability or an overcharge kind of thing that's just one ability and you know the pros they could use it really well uh, but there's also like a thing where you just put it on autopilot and it just does whatever it does. Um, so maybe you'd do that thing. It would be a bit harder for the charge one, but the EMP one, you could just tell it to go off whenever there's more than 10 units in range, for example. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about the microing because uh, that's, you know, we're, we're sort of keeping the core of the game in vision all the time. You know, does this make the game harder to play? Is this like too much of your attention? Like, is this a fun addition right we're always trying to like keep it make sure that you don't add a thing which like kind of devolves into a click fest because it's really easy to do that if you add a deployability and you didn't think about it for example like on a unit like it deploys to be it becomes more powerful when it's stationary that can really easily turn into a really uh. micro heavy unit where you need to deploy every time to, before you move and then you move and you stop and you move and you stop it gets really bad right so always thinking about that stuff right what else have we got to talk about now? Because, you know, I flew uh, through let's, it. Let's go into the demo. That was good. Yeah, cool. Right, so my screen's frozen, uh, but that's just in time. So <laughs> there we go. Right. Oh, yeah, uh, there's a couple more things that just uh, had some, you know, guard artillery shooting. I forgot to mention them in time, but, you know, we're just sort of working on it. Uh, um, you know, it's got a little charge up effect. I love that railgun style. With the, you know, with the. Um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a barrel, it's just got these two prongs, and the yeah. plasma is contained between them, and magnet, magnetized forward, magnetified forward, whatever. Yeah, and then it's got, like, little shockwaves and stuff. We got loads of these in store that we're not really showing, <laughs> so you, you can imagine. Uh, yeah, because, you know, it's always just, like, we're just cranking them out, just cranking them out, so... All right. So you see, we have lots of these ideas um, of things coming up, but we, you know, we really have to play test them. We have to get in there, actually, like do it before we lock in features. So you know, we have a billion ideas, and some of them will make it, and some of them won't, um, and they'll evolve over time. But it's a bit hard for us because you know, because the engine's not finished yet, we can't actually start like you know doing that process. So um, the engine's just sort of coming together now, like to the point where we can start to do those things. So we're just entering that really like exciting phase where we can just like build the behaviors, play them, see them, see how it goes. So yeah, we're, we're really excited about that. Speaking of which, we're, we're, it's time to open the goodies bag, girl. So <laughs> if you head on over to your Steam, we're going to do the prototype first, right? To see the, all the pretty explosions. That's like kind of a, you know, it, we're not really, um, I, I guess it's kind of like a sneak preview behind the scenes kind of content just for you, right? It's not really something that, but it's, it sort of explains a little bit about how we make the game. So cool. why don't you do that? And then uh, I guess you need to share your screen now or whatever. So, so this is a sneak peek to uh, the development process behind our game. And what we have here is a prototype engine. And that's what we do as part of our pipeline to make the... Um, all the units work and make all of the effects work and all the stuff we actually have almost two little games that we've got and what we're looking at here is the prototype and what we've got is it's just playing like in a replay mode yeah you can't really control anything but you can look around we've got all these units that are spawned and it's it's flying through and um it's just got all this stuff and actually we use this tool to help us record the trailer footage that you saw on Steam. So that's how that was made. This is a kind of the sneak peek behind it. Uh, there's not all the things that you can see in the trailer in this scene, right? Because what yeah. we did is we made loads of scenes. We tried all sorts of stuff. We 
he has two gallons and so on. But that's the kind of thing you can see. It's a little bit buggy. It's a little bit in development still. Of course. Um, yeah. But, so it, yeah. it has the same content, same units, same models, same programming for some of the stuff, like all the ballistic curve stuff is all the same. Um, what The thing that's different is that the performance isn't that great on this one. So if you look at your performance right now, it's like 30, 40 frames per second. The real engine, it does less stuff, but it does it at like 60, 70 frames per second. Right. So that, that's the difference. But the, the dev time in the two things is completely different like one takes two years to make and the other one takes two months to make right so for the content people creating maps and vfx and stuff they need this so that they can see what they're making right and right. make sure that it's all like working well so that's why there's two things yeah and it's not enough to just have a preview in unity like we do for most of our vfx you actually need a gameplay like thing so you can check if the explosions are too bright for example are they distracting you from looking at the units those kind of yeah. questions are really like personal, those explosions right? there are too big you know yeah. they're just impact explosions and they're just excessive but we'll get there i can almost hear my yeah, audience exactly. from here saying don't distract guile he doesn't need any help with distraction <laughs> <laughs> oh don't worry we're gonna do loads of distractions yeah and then um these guys just standing around so this is just a quick oh. preview of a... oh yeah he just got blown up yeah you can this one's pretty good because uh this is a artillery that's firing on the units right and so um the effect for it is too small but yeah. the units getting destroyed you can just see the death animation in isolation so pretty good um for that but yeah so um other than that it's just testing out all the lighting so the map system the render system it's kind of identical for what we've got um, yeah trees and strategic icons all that sort of stuff yeah 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 you know the water being rendered this is still the old version of the map that you can see so we've got we showed you a work in progress one a little bit earlier um there's all sorts of explosions going on here and so on but you yeah. can sort of see the uh the level of the graphics right and yeah. how it's a bit of a yeah. visual upgrade from yeah just some a of the bit games. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit <laughs> and, and i mean we're not even done because this still has the broken lighting in it just so you know and all the vfx are yeah too. exactly this is all oh, a lot of it's mean, placeholder isn't it and you know well it is actually it is like genuinely like a lot of the stuff because we're just going back through and we're just upgrading and upgrading and upgrading and just even the stuff that we showed in the trailer we've already done like two three iterations on it um yeah. so you know you saw the chosen death explosion if you compare that to the style of the chosen stuff that was in the trailer you can see there's a big difference we've recolored them we've the, a lot of the textures and things like that so that's that's kind of what we use this tool for so there we go then you could just uh yeah. you know admire your leisure plus things look a little bit samey at the moment everything's like the one or two colors you know you've got orange explosions or you've got the blue explosions yeah, and that's yeah. kind of it so you know there'll be more content over time but um you know you can see we're not really far off having like the playable game out so we'll get some gameplay videos out um that's all your artillery high arc ballistics so that's quite different to uh, like a direct fire shot um yeah, yeah we've got the wrecks going there um i think what i'm really excited about seeing which is going to come up soon is all the buildings will be animated so right now they're all just static and sitting there but soon they'll all be like spinning and whizzing and turning around in different circles especially the guard buildings because they do that whole like gyro thing where they you know the circles turn in different directions it's going to be really nice so and you know we can keep giving you versions of this like you know we'll have another meeting in like two months or something like that and you'll uh -huh. just see the upgrade and how like all those things will have changed so that's yeah. going to be really nice moving forward yeah. we can do that you can yeah you can see the shields chains. in the background yeah yeah don't know if you had a glimpse of those in the trailer oh. i think maybe they've been there but shields there you go oh that's beautiful yeah and th yeah, this is work that's... in progress too i know i so, love you know, I love that so light good now, refraction. I imagine That's... how it'll look once we spend another week or two on it, right? Um, so we're actually, yeah, you know, we're, we're planning on having... There's a the commander there. Oh, where about? Uh, yeah, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. In, uh, he's hiding in behind a tree, yeah. Look at him surveying the battlefield. Hiding. Classic chosen. <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're going to give you some uh, tools to use so that you can hit a button and it does like a nice little rotate or pan with the camera just so you can get some nice shots. Love it. 
yeah, yeah. On that subject, is there anything that you would particularly like? Uh, do you know what? I can't think off the top of my head, but get back to me in a week or two. I'm sure I'll have something for you. Yeah. yeah. So cool. and feel free to mess around with this in your in your with your leisure too. Well, I will um, be. You know. Well. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, have fun uh, with it. But yeah, it's if this is just a very simple kind of preview tool, it just runs the same scenario over and over again, and um, it's just a little bit of a sneak peek into the development. You can kind of see there's all sorts of things that aren't in there. So, for example, all the buildings the yep. are slightly hovering above the ground, and the reason why is because we haven't put the holes renderer into this engine, and we ah. actually do have the holes rendering into the. Um, other one the holes actually work here but there's just not the code to sort of make them dynamic so you right. need to you would need to place them manually under each building um, oh, but the look but, of it it really is just beautiful i can tell you and that this is the messed up sky like look at the skybox it's horrific <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, disgusting, right? It's well, too dark and too bright at the same time. How is that even possible? I mean, We've it, replaced it. It's Don't worry. really heartening because I can tell you there were doubters when I first announced this on my channel way back when. There were doubters that a project like this would get anywhere near this far. And to see the progress that you guys have made in what seems to me is a pretty novel way of making a game, you know, with people working in tandem all over the world, pretty much. To well, see the you progress know, you've made, it's extraordinary. We just do whatever it takes, you know? <laughs> like, my, 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 you know, like, I kind of have this, like, approach. It's like, I don't do my best, I do what it takes, right? <sighs> and sometimes that's better than my best, right? you got to be, you actually, like, sometimes it takes three times more than your life savings. <laughs> Those are anti as. The yeah, those are anti uh, but the totally missiles bugged. aren't homing, so they yeah. just do whatever, and... Um, they look like the old telephones. Oh, I love the uh, little... Uh, uh, honestly, this is like, I really like the design of this unit when it's not being a bit derpy like that. Yeah. But, you but... know, it's got the rockets on it, um, and, you know, the, the idea is the rockets actually, like, are like are served on this yeah. rotating magazine. It's I... like a revolver kind of thing, and it just shoots the missiles, <laughs> but right now they just firing in every direction <laughs> so. but yeah uh, what you're talking about is like the achievements so far mm. um yeah like uh, i'm not even sure i thought we would get this far for a while there and you know what i put it down to is just that there's that gap in the market you know there and really that, is. There's, a, there's a real audience for this game uh, people want to play it they play similar games they they still play games that are like 16 years old right people are still playing <laughs> ta Right, and some yeah, of these communities, true. they're still growing. Uh, like people want a modern alternative, and they don't really have one. So, yeah. and it's you know the players feel that um, you know. So we've had growth with um, you know we've had lots of volunteers come and help us. Like you know you help us out. Um, we've got Patreons, you know, who supported us. We've had our investors who've come in, you know, who are all players who have already voted with their wallets to like you know come in and you know help sponsor this and take it up to the next level so everyone's just been rallying behind the project um we've had like devs come in um say you know like i just want to help out and then some of them you know move on to having full-time jobs out of it um we, when we advertise like a job we get like 50 applicants for it um That's there's awesome. so yeah. the, the reception has yeah, been so good crazy. Forty thousand wish lists on steam uh half a billion views um, you know, half a million views, not a billion views, we're not there yet. We'll be there soon. Give it time. Damn it, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exaggerating. Um, but yeah, it just shows that the world needs this game, and that's something we all knew at the start. Yeah, and yeah, it's fantastic, guys. I love it. Yeah. And I yeah i guess just now people are starting to see that you know we're doing this we're, we're really doing this we're here um it is happening so you know jump on board uh, if anybody wants to see more of this or wants to help us out um what would be really cool is to just come up to our discord and just jump in there because the more people we have in discord the better it looks to our investors to publishers to everybody um, the better we look and the more they take us seriously and the more money they give us and then the better game we, we can make. So if you can just go to Discord, that actually helps us so much. 
Um, I know like, you know, 25,000 people or something will watch this video. Um, please come, come and help us. Just hit that add button. Otherwise, um, if people could go to Kickstarter, sign up. Uh, I think we don't have that many sign ups. We've got like 10,000 people in our Discord, which is, you know, an achievement as well. Um, but on the Kickstarter, we've got like 4,000 or something like that. So we know people are interested. Please just go there, type in your name and hit the button. Um, it just changes the perception for people and it helps us grow. And so, incidentally, guys, please. there will be links in the description below this video for Discord, Patreon and Kickstarter and all that jazz. So, yeah, if yeah. you'd like to help out, you can and find all if, the info there. And if you are thinking about being an investor, then you should do it with us because, um, you know, we can give you a rundown of all our company secret budgets and things and you'll find out that the numbers are actually pretty great. And so you could uh, buy a piece. Yeah, you could you could uh, get some shares in the company and uh, like make excellent and amazing returns if that's something you want to do. If you want to help out, because a lot of the, um, you know, I think all of our investors were players who played um, similar games and they just want to see us succeed. So if you want to see us succeed, if you want to make sh make this game like even better than it's going to be, we, I think like you know we're really on the right track but we can be even more ambitious and even better with your help so call right. now vote now on your phones <laughs> <Call now. laughs> and while we're shamelessly plugging uh plugging ourselves big thank you to the um to all our patreons who do single-handedly fund an entire developer for the project so you know all those contributions put together actually do like raise the whole project up we do have an entire dev so you know another way if people want to support just jump onto patreon throw in five bucks ten bucks whatever that all adds up it, it makes a difference to us it really does so um yeah big thank you to the existing patreons shall we do the other one now Brett? yeah let's, yeah, let's do out. the other one I mean, a girl can't get enough of this one, but we'll do, we'll do we've got more. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's check out the next one. Right. Uh, so am I, what am I doing here? Am I just clicking yeah, so connect? Share your screen. Oh, I, I haven't um, shared it, have I? There we go. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and then we could guide you through all the special buttons. You know, the, it should be, the first one should be pretty straightforward. Oh, we'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a play button there. I mean, it says connect. Is that what I'm doing? There's the play There's a oh my god! Top. Do you see what I mean? Straightforward, bread is a relative term. No, don't <laughs> worry entirely we'll on who we'll you're speaking to. Step of the way. There's a play button. You press the play. To button. be fair, I didn't work. think that that was a button. I just thought it was like that is I don't, okay. I don't that see it. True. I don't see a play button. Where is it? At the top, mate. Oh. Oh yeah, my god! Like it wasn't just me. Thank goodness. Yeah, horrible, yeah. Um, right. horrible UI design. Who did this uh, in the last three hours? <laughs> Put that in. <laughs> so <laughs> that guy it was me. <laughs> so I'm just hitting this, right? Yeah, you just press play button. All that other stuff is like custom, whatever. So Windows firewall. I'm sure it's fine. Right. Yeah, you want to allow it because it is sort of um, let's connect. Oh, Indeed. There goes, so and um, ah, there look at this. Zoom in, and we got a bit of a commander. Little EDA. Look at him hovering Guy. along. That's so yep. cool. So, uh, you know, the badge uh, works on my machine. It's appropriate. So, we did test this. It should be great. Um, but yeah, so one Place thing. The and then just... Wait, so, this Sorry. one? Yep. yep. That's the factory, I guess. Yeah, yep. yeah. I was going to say, there's no tool tips to tell me what all these structures are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what do you mean? You can't, you don't know just from the unit code? I know. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that uh, you you probably can't shift place things. So you've got to do it. One, wait for this building to finish before okay. place, yeah, placing something else. You can. You, you can, can hold down shift and then you just right. click, the, click the sphere button. Oh, there's there, there's a bit of a problem is you can't, you can't resume. Really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's, I'll, I'll do another one. Whoop. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you can start building, but we haven't got the uh, repair command. I'll be more patient. It's in. fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you what can you can do is you can queue um, stuff up. So if you hold yeah. down shift, yeah, um, and then you can like click the little sphere one, which is a fifth. this one. Yeah, that's a P gen. Yep. So you can keep, put that somewhere. Ooh, I don't. You know. probably want like five of them or something. 
Yeah. There we go. And then, um, yeah, so you, yeah, you do have to click it every time. So Seems yeah, we, big right, caveat just... here: we haven't spent any time on the UI at all. It's just bashing it in as quickly as human pos uh, humanly possible. Uh, the focus has just been getting big fights going for thousands of units over the network, moddable, um, all that sort of stuff. You know, that that's been the that's the hard part of this project, and that's what we've been focusing on. And it's been taking a long time. So you know, all the you know repair orders and stuff. That's not hard stuff to do. We're just not doing it because it's not important. So sure. yeah, but it's yeah. horribly broken. Is my point totally horribly yeah. broken so <laughs> but you can that's see why we're not, that's why we're not shipping it out to public just yet because um if you gave this to the public there would be a gas <laughs> and horribly. i so, hope uh, uh, people are paying God attention just loves us I, uh, very much um, and that's why he he'll overlook all um, the horrible bugs i'm fashioning right. early meta with these moves so i hope people are uh, paying attention <laughs> to my build order yeah you see the t the t-shaped uh p gen that's going to be huge they'll got... they'll call that the yeah. guile maneuver <laughs> yeah. if you look at your alloy extractor there and zoom in on it you can see it actually goes under the ground if you oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, cool. So that's something cool about uh, lots of the structures and buildings. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They have the factory sections. just to the left of it. Uh, that does a bit of under the ground as well. That's going to be big with the uh, guard as well, isn't it? Because they're very much yeah, yeah, of yeah. the sphere. Although the joke sphere. is, yeah, the joke is we haven't got holes for them quite ready because we they use circular holes. So we have yeah. we've got a square hole code, but we haven't got the circular <laughs> hole code. You need. <laughs> Can There's I'm... something wrong with this factory where half the bottom half of it's not rendering. Oh yeah, it, its holes aren't set up properly, but you know that'll be get all fixed. Ah, this up. one's actually uh, more correct. It just needs a tarmac now. Um, it used to be right. a lot less. We fixed it right. uh, last night. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then so, so cool. yeah, you know the. Do you units... mean in, in a different build it's fixed, or in this build right now no, it in looks this good? Build. Um, right, it just needs the tarmac. Yeah, it just needs a tarmac. And there's another issue is that the uh, terrain isn't flattened when you build these buildings. So if they clip through a bit, then they just clip through a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so uh, your command there is you go. An adventure. You built an NG. You built a scout. Woohoo! You're building things. Of course yeah, I'm building Yeah, and uh, we do have an Intel system work. So there's, there's nothing really else on the map. But if you were to find it, you'd get a little gray blip and you'd be able to shoot it and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, and so um, these um, units, uh, you just sort of queuing them out in the factory, and it's repeat build by default in this case, uh, just to make it a bit easier. Um, yeah, and there we go, and then you can sort of do a bit of factory upgrades and stuff. So it depends on how much time you want to spend building, because what we could do is we could show you the, um, the fighting as well, because that's another thing. Oh, this one's bugged. you got to go uh -huh. two to the left. Oh, really? Okay. It's all yeah, it's... I, you know, I'd criticize, but there are a few maps in FA that are still like that. <laughs> I've noticed. Uh, no, that one, that one's actually a, quite a shameful bug. I won't go into the details of why that is like it is, but it is. Um, so, yeah. Cool. So what have we got here? What's this little thing, this skitter uh, thing? Uh, it's, it's a little robot with no walking animation, but that's a sort of raid unit. We've got an artillery I don't unit. Know why it so feels very Star Wars. I can totally imagine that in the Star Wars universe. That's so nice. cool. And what's this chappy? Nice. This is like a standard tank. He's a mobile artillery. Oh, mobile artillery. Uh, yeah, Beg your rockets, pardon. rocket artillery <gasps> for the EGA like them. That's cool, man. That's very cool. So you cool. see on the next side, there's those uh, eight little grey circles. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes that's where the rockets one. come out. I love it. And you can see some of that in the trailer. It's it's kind of cool because they don't all fire at the same time. It's like, choo 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 It looks really cool. Saturation like bombardment. And you see the antennas? Like, they're yeah. pointing sideways. They're actually going to be animated later. So they could go up and sideways and... Like little rabbit ears. <laughs> Very cute. Rabbit ears, yeah. When, why would they go up and down? Like, is, are they going to do uh, I was target, just thinking or? it would be, yeah, like when, when there's a unit in target, um, yeah. when there's a valid target, they go into targeting mode. And, yeah. and you can That's see something... even the commander's got them on there as well. He's got a bunch of antennas. Yeah. 
that's something yeah, I'm that's excited like... to see is when EDA becomes animated because I know EDA does have a lot more animations planned than right. the other factions. Like if you just look at this building here that you've just built, there's what one, two, three, four, five, six different parts that you can see that are pretty obviously going to be like flapping or moving or whatever. Uh -huh. Brett's put yeah. so much thought into this, and um, look, I mean, you can probably tell us, Brett, now how how that's a radar. How is that going to be animated? Yeah, so uh, that one's that one's gonna have a rotation on it, so it's gonna rotate horizontally, but it's not just gonna rotate; it's actually gonna rotate like in ninety degree in increments. So it's gonna rotate, then stop, rotate, and stop. Ah, very cool. Uh, right, and then it's got an upgrade animation, and that's where like all the other antenna flaps come in. And like the little antenna things, they might go into like an X shape, but I'm not sure of it. Oh, we got a little bit of a bug with the anti air. It's it's rotating the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this is an anti-air tower, um, and it's got the little flaps on it and the commander. You can actually see an animation playing. Oh, yeah. One. If you zoom in, it's got little rocket oh, pods, nice. and they're just folding up, right? And uh, that's actually a bug. They're just it, The animation's just playing <laughs> whether or not it wants to. Uh, Very yeah. cool, though. So yeah, you can yeah. start to see, get an indication of it coming to life, but that's going to be all over it. And, yeah, um, yeah, and like you can the see other the other factions, the they don't do that so much. It's yeah. not as planned in that they have all these little, little bits and stuff. So that's quite cool. And I'm also noticing that uh, the Greek writing on the side that's uh, changed color now. It's blue yeah, because yeah. it's team color, right? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. So you just built a um alloy storage and this one's going to be super animated so you see those crates uh-huh and they're actually going to go up and down in respect to how much you have stored so like if there's none if there's none in storage it's gonna like put like you, it's got a little crate at the top and it's actually going to grab the crate and there's a door at the bottom and the door's going to open cool. and the crate's going to go underground so there's like an underground transport system for the crates right and as you store up more alloys they get piled up, and then as you use them up, they get piled out again. This game really this is, is going to feel alive. You don't see this stuff from the screenshots, and it doesn't do it justice that there's all these little uh, things planned so far ahead in advance, because that would have been built like a year and a half ago or something. Yeah, yeah, I think I did these at like late 21, all these models, but we planned it all. So you see like here, there's these little crates on the uh, slopey bit. Uh-huh. And the idea is they're actually like an elevator crates and the drones, as the crates are going up, there's going to be a little a drone helicopter thing and it's going to catch the crate and it's going to take it to the building destinations. So this is what you've just built as an engineering station. Right. This thing can build. And so that's one of the things we can do in our game is like if you don't want to um, build units right away, you can just build an engineering building right from the start of the game. And um, we've also just done a bit of balance experimentation where your commander's got a hefty amount of income. So you don't need to build like like alloys first. You can actually go to tier two alloy extractor first or something, right? You can just do that uh, right away. And that's one of the things. Uh, yeah, so you could do, oh, that's um, a bugged up unit. Oh, okay. That's the energy storage, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have a model for that. So it just gives you a green box and doesn't work. Oh, um, this thing's enormous. That's a tech center. So what you're building is the tier two land tech center. Right. And that lets you unlock the tier two units. So it's kind of like Red Alert 2 um, yep. or Red Alert 3 or all those other games. What we're doing is we've currently got a system where you need to build that. And then you need to also upgrade a factory. And if you upgrade a factory without this thing, it will just build faster. But if you get both, then you can actually build the higher tech units, right? And then your enemy, they can snipe this thing and destroy your tech advantage. So it just goes back down to the tech one, tier one units. Um, yeah. And then we got one of those for the air as well. And it's also going to be animated. You can see it's got like a little um, like platform on the, on the side which slides around and these two pods they've got doors on the top and those doors will actually open and you can put stuff in there like they'll be animated to have stuff go there and stuff um the um textures on the map look a bit wonky yeah um they changed the shader or something since this map was built and it's yeah we yeah. have uh, we changed it around a little bit. This map needs a bit of a facelift since uh, 
we last looked at it. Yeah, so this is the air tech center, and then you, you when you upgrade it, it'll have three towers on it. It's going to be super great. And again, it's got, actually got like a little bit of a door. Yeah. Uh, in the ground, and uh, you'll be able to sort of transport things in and out of that door, sort of as as a purely visual thing. Can you make a uh, air factory, please, Kyle? Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you yeah, well, pick an engineer. Yeah, I don't actually need that to finish. Uh, which one's the air factory when it's at home? Uh, if you scroll to the left, it's the second thing. Yeah, that yeah. one. So oh, that's it's enormous. I like this unit. See, that's all underground, that bit. Yeah, that is yeah. cool. And the reason why is you'll see when the rest of the factory gets built. So. Oh, that is splendid. Uh, Look at that. Yeah, so you can see there's like a little bit of a gantry, and what it does is it actually like catches the planes and it launches them like with magnets. That's right? cool. And so, so like this is actually the one of the most complicated units uh, because it needs to do like everything at the same time. Yeah. So, Let's just go from the top. So the top two crane things, they build the units on the side, right? And then there's like a little diagonal elevator which sticks them into the um, the ribbed thing, which is like the Lord's tube for the planes, right? <laughs> and then it shoots the planes out. But if you're building an engineer or something, then it needs to come down. So that diagonal door, that diagonal slope behind it is actually, it can drop down and it will like let the engineer be dropped out. And then, our air factories, we're planning on making them able to repair and store planes at the same time, so they're kind of like airfields as well. So that's why the tube, the launch tube, is also the uh, landing tube, right? So it will catch the planes as they jump, as they land, and it will like slow them down with magnets, and then they'll be like diverted into the underground parking. I love it. And no more redundant air staging facilities that no one builds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, actually the guard can still get one because uh, they can repair their planes, but they can't store them. And they'll have like plane bunkers, which are like a special separate unit just for the guard. But yes, yeah, so uh, by default, all of our factories can store uh, like a bunch of aircraft and you can repair them and you can sort of you know, maintain and them and hide them. From conceal, your I was well. going to say, yeah, conceal yeah. the threat. I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, if you're stacking all the bombers, why do they need to know? Exactly. <laughs> so, so you can see a few issues on here besides the map being uh, the textures are a bit funny at the moment. There's no props, so there's no um, trees or anything that'll add a lot. And just then that clump of units, they're all trying to walk to the same spot because yeah. they just need to stop when they're close enough. So there's still, you know, all sorts of issues. Yeah, yeah. Some of them that we and, fixed in the past, like, you know, we had trees on here, then we removed them, and that unit, you can check out the tank treads that you're making right now. Um, as Brad said, there's no walk units on, uh, walk cycle on those units. They're meant to actually, like, walk the ones with legs, so, uh -huh. you know, it, this is a constantly for us. We're, like, redoing things, we're turning things on and off, and all that sort of stuff, so I, I just see issues everywhere I look at the moment, well, yeah, but it's still... Yeah, another thing worth yeah. noting is that our pathfinding doesn't have post-processing on it yet because we just uh, made it to be super performant and, um, you know, it's like you can do like a thousand units at the same time without like a hiccup and all the rest of it, right? But it needs some post-processing and so what happens, you may notice that the units only move in eight cardinal directions for the most part. They've got like a movement system where they do like the nice smooth turns and so on, but like they kind of do a bit of zigzagging and things like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can um, make him reverse. If you give him a move order just behind him, he'll actually reverse into the position. So he will. There you go. There yeah. you go. So, and he does like nice turning circles. And yeah, yeah, we do have if, the turning circles. Yeah, there you go. If so the you move order turn. is near him, he has to like slow down and turn slowly. If the move order is far away, he like just zips there. So there's a lot of like yeah. vehicle movement stuff going on. Um, that's pretty nice. So yeah, I, I just gave you a list of things that were broken. There's also a list of things that are good. Like if yeah. you uh, well, zoom that's... out, you can yeah, see yeah. the range rings and stuff. So those range rings, uh, the vision radius, we've got the strategic icons, all of those things are built to like handle thousands at the same time, which is not like... Not trivial. Not yeah. trivial. You've obviously got those hologram shaders, you've got the building um, upgrade stuff, like all of this stuff's going to be better later on. That's just all placeholders, but it, it looks okay now. <laughs> I think that vehicle's <laughs> just walking around in circles, right? Yep. 
He's yeah, just gonna he do that all the, uh, day. He can't hit the um, he can't hit the uh, the target location because it's blocked by another vehicle. So he, I like he got there and yeah, <laughs> he's going into hugs. Um, yeah, because that's the reason why is because we don't have formations in the game yet. So every unit is just individually trying to like jam it in. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things. I'm just wondering. Let's break the game. Should we do that? Let's spawn a thousand units, have them fight against each other. Sure. How do I do that? Right. So, um, in the so the first what group is actually quite easy. It just says, you know, in the bottom right panel, there's a list of things you can. Thousand spawn. EDA T1 tanks. Thousand EDA T1 tanks, right? Oh, there they Put are. That bang. Um, so what I'm interested in is uh, we currently have sneakily hidden the frames per second counter. But what I'm interested in is how many frames per second we're getting. So what you do is you press Control Alt F1, and that should show it. And the joke is, is once you've showed it, you can't hide it again. <laughs> <laughs> so and like we have 130 frames per second, which is a respectable amount. There we go. Uh, that's good enough, right? And actually, this game is, uh, I find it's GPU bound rather than CPU bound. So yeah. here you can see you're sort of getting to, because um, we don't have any LODs on the models yet. So once you, you, if you're seeing it, you're seeing the high poly version all the time. And what we need is we actually uh, need LOD models. So yeah. you can see your frames tank when you zoom in, but when you zoom out, it's uh, 130 frames again. And what you could do is to start a battle we can, um, this is a little bit more complicated because you got to spawn the enemy tanks now. So uh, what you could do is you, if you select all the tanks that you've just spawned and then you just move them to the left or something, right? You can sort of see them start going and, um, you know, they're just piling in and doing like this whole thing and then just, and they're about to start like dog piling into the same place. But what you can do is in the panel on the right again, you see at the top it's got a team and then you, you've got a zero there if you set that to a one uh sorry the panel where sorry panel on the right at the yep. top of the panel there's a team, team one thing. yeah so team one and then you press the thousand eda tanks again and uh back now they're the enemy tanks now you've got a oh no back, that's gone there, really yeah. badly for my team zero <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, what we'll notice here is we're, we're not dropping below 60 frames much, right? And that's with the uh, horrible um, LODs and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and zoomed in and stuff. And if you zoom out, right, if you zoom out, you should see your frames go up, right? So we're sort of going at 80 or something right now. I can't really tell. Um, and it's like 100 and turn or something and that's like with thousands of units fighting and this isn't like a natural thing this is like every unit for himself kind of mash them all together kind of things a lot more intense than you'd normally see in the game yeah and you know like we're thinking about having a thousand unit as the limit for how many units you can have so that is like you won't get a battle really this big is what we're saying yeah um but uh looks like team zero is having a bad time because they were caught out of position that's gone really <laughs> badly for them yeah they're getting uh getting a bit of the crescent move on them um you could actually copy and paste units you know? so if oh it's too late now because you run out of tanks but you could have selected them and just press Control c and Control v and, you can and see the, the radar tank. working at the moment so oh yeah yeah the radar's um Working it oh, now. Here we go. Uh... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And now you can see we're starting to tank the frames a little bit, right? Um, but it's that still was a, a very a much a quicker battle, though. So that was a lot more activity happening in. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Well, it's true. I think what's what's happening is it's just the um, the amount of things on the field because we don't have any LODs. So yeah, because uh, you can see, uh, like, what I noticed is that it didn't really go faster when the battle ended. It was just trying to render all the wrecks. Yeah. So, uh, so again, many. we don't have any LODs. So each one of them is the full high poly model all the time so when you zoom out it just jumps up to 120 again so that's kind of that's actually what the game is it's just that number <laughs> that we've been looking at <laughs> we're just making sure that it actually works because it's really easy to just open up unity stick a bunch of like code in it you know 
Um, and then when you stick 300 units in it, it drops to two frames a second. Yeah. Right? Trivial. Anybody can do that, right? The hard work is actually making it work. And you can see the pathfinding is not, not having any post-processing on it. So you can see that units are kind of like stacking into diagonals and like they're making 90 degree turns and stuff like that. Yeah. And they don't need to. That's just because, um, you know, the, the base pathfinding system, it works in a way that it's got these cells and you can kind of see that they track along the cells. And then there's another system that we haven't added, which will then smooth all this out. And that's exactly how a lot of RTS do it. It's called um, like, so um, this is actually using flow field pathfinding. And essentially what flow field pathfinding is, it's exactly the same as A star pathfinding, which is what games like Supreme Commander use and um, a lot of other games like StarCraft, everybody uses it. Um, but it's just at the same time. That's the only difference. We just do it in a parallel way so that A star is it calculates it per unit and we calculate it for every unit at the same time. Yeah. So uh, that's why it's like pretty efficient because you only need to know the destination. So when you order a thousand units, it's the same amount of time to calculate the paths as it is for a as it is for one unit. Um, and that's what we do. And then we have a movement system on top of it. That's how these things work. You need a pathfinding system and you need a movement system. And then we got some guard units because you spawned. I spawned a bit. I'm sorry. I've been clicking things out of curiosity. Nah, don't worry. <laughs> You know, and see, like, uh, the game's handled it just fine, apparently, so <laughs> it loves you too. Um, I think you might have spawned it for two different teams at once. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I did. did. You spawned them yeah, on top of each on other. Top of yeah, each other. Sort of flickering. Yeah. <laughs> well, very impressive stuff, guys. Lots to be excited about. Yeah, so that was that demo. Um, you know, feel free to mess around with that too. You can get it to crash if you know how. I'm sure I'll manage. <laughs> you know, um, and you can also get it to crash even if you don't know how. But, you know, so far it hasn't crashed. And, um, you know, I think um, it's like that's that's kind of what we're working on. We're just working on making it run. You know, you can't make it run for one unit. You've got to make it run for 10,000 units. Um, that's that's all we're doing. They just uh, And it's really just one small step at a time because these things, it takes... You know, you have to be extremely rigorous and you have to make the computer do what you want and not what the computer wants to do and all the rest of it. And these guys are about to start exploding. The, the clip through yeah. buildings. Yeah, I don't think there's... Um, I, I'm not sure if we've uh, invented friendly fire just yet. Maybe we haven't. So there we go. And some of the effects are missing as well. So, like, when a unit dies, the explosion doesn't play on it correctly for some reason. This is a definite case of works of my machine yesterday because several days ago it did work and then it stopped working. So, you know, these things do happen um, in the. But yeah, next time you play yeah. this, I think we'll pre spawn a big base up the top that you have to kill. So, you have to, like, yeah. build your base, build up your eco, maybe go tech two or something or tier two get your units march in and go kill it um we could even like periodically spawn a couple of units up the top and send them down to harass you a little bit won't be too complicated uh which is how lots of campaigns work anyway which is interesting yeah. they're not actually run by ai they just um gr group a bunch of units and just send them at you on predefined paths like it's that's how it goes yeah it's like a manual ai it's actually um pretty important uh for scripting these campaign missions like so the reason we're talking about this is because we've got uh, a bunch of people in our team who've made campaigns uh before so we got all this experience uh with how to do it and all the tricks and the reason why you do it instead of just using an ai is um the ai is pretty generic but you can sculpt the sort of scenarios so that the units arrive at the right time and you know can make it respond to the player a lot better so that if you're building all the ships it starts building the torpedo bombers and it sends the special snipe squadron for you if your commander's getting out of your base um speed uh, really annoyed me with one of the missions he made uh, for the nomads campaign where like he added a special script that if your commander leaves your base the the units get sent right after your commander so you better be really careful and and I was caught like three times in a row because I thought I was safe, but I kept forgetting about that feature, quote unquote feature. <laughs> uh, and um, but yeah, it's it's sort of an example of 
you know how you can really like tailor the experience and you know we're trying we're, we have all sorts of things in the bag like um you know like the nomads campaign we did things like player choice you could choose how the mission goes and you can actually end it in two completely different ways so you know we're taking that experience and bringing it forward to this game so a campaign is to be clear is a stretch goal it's not going to be included by default but it will be included if the marvelous investors in kickstarter backers help us out so i need that to happen things. i need my campaign so you guys better cough up <laughs> 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 yeah. Even yeah. if there's uh, not a campaign, we'll be able to do things like survival maps, sure. things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can but see how the bees knees voice yeah. acting guy will be in it. Yeah, yeah. I will indeed. Cool. My services will be, be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Be the EDA. <laughs> on, yeah. Be the Gratefully EDA. donated. Oh dear. Uh, this, is a, this is a tight bunch. Uh, <laughs> do we need to? Uh, could we show Guy the map editor? I mean, load the ice map, I, or is it... uh, I don't know the I don't know if the ice map is loaded with the map editor. I don't think it's included. Um, it's not bundled. I just thought we could send it to him if that's easy. Yeah, we can. I mean, so um, one thing that we do on this map is we mirror the height map of the map so that it's a completely fair map, so that there's no like advantage for either player. But we don't do that to the textures. And so it looks organic, even though it's a symmetrical yeah. map. Yeah, um, that's a quite clever. Because if you zoom out, which you can't do because this is a video, but <laughs> this video, it doesn't look symmetrical. It's totally symmetrical, but it, it just gives it this whole organic feeling, which is pretty smart. Yeah. So I wonder if we can catch it, actually. That's all right. Nah, it's fine, whatever. Speed gets to play on. Um, so... Yeah, and then, so this was two weeks ago, whatever, um, so, yeah, and then he's just building, he's just sort of testing, like, kind of the build all this, pretending to play the game, and things like that, and you can see that he's got a slightly worse GPU than us, so his game's only running <laughs> at 70 frames a second or something, but also, uh, uh, this is inside the editor, so I think when we change it from the editor to the build, it runs about three times faster or something, because, um, right. Or, or so, it's a like maybe it's not three times faster, maybe it's like two times faster. Um, but yeah, so that that's kind of like our development process where we actually make it run at sixty frames in the editor, which is the slow one with all the debug stuff in it, and then we ship it and it's just like double the speed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good. So we kind of um, and you can see that the build bars haven't been put in there. You've seen them in your game. The build bars are there, but yeah. they're not in here yet. So that's just kind of the ray of the progress at which we go. So yeah, actually, we we'll pause at a good time so you can see that the textures are not quite symmetrical. So you can see that here the ice pattern doesn't repeat, and there's like a slightly different texture over here and over there and stuff. And the mountains are pretty um, clean. Yeah. So, like, for example, this mountain looks very similar to that one, but they're not exactly the same, and that's because the height map's the same, but the textures are not, so it nice. looks different. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a technique we're going to try on, on a few of the other maps, too. Yeah. There, so, yeah. like, I mean, uh, the, the thing that I can't stress enough about what we've built here is that this supports modding, it supports all those units over the network, um that's like the really hard part about it we got all the ballistic stuff we got the pathfinding stuff there are some bugs but you can see it's all coming together and you can see where it's going um we nearly have a playable game like you you basically can play it now because you have economy you have base building you have tanks that can kill each other um so you know we're not far off you know actually you know yeah. really you know, having like... some games with this yeah, because, you know, like, oh, you know, you just press the button and it spawned a whole base for the guard. You press another one and it spawned a bunch of tanks. Like, imagine if that just spawned a pre-built scenario and it wasn't a game, it wasn't a multiplayer map, it was a campaign mission. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we you can, can do, do this stuff and it, it, it's coming soon. So, that's good. Yeah. You know, it's been a How long, long time. How long could it possibly time. take? Famous <laughs> last words. Famous yeah. last words. Yeah. Well, you're definitely further on, I think, than uh, I would have expected. 
I um, like I already said earlier, um, I I had my reservations when you guys first told me about it, but um, it it's extraordinary, and it really does feel like you're almost at the stage where all the fundamentals are in, and it's literally just polish, you know. The, the finishing touches you've almost got. I, I reckon we're going to be working on the fundamentals till after the release of the game. That's what I think. Um, <laughs> as you know, it's it's like we got we got the stuff, but it's like you know you go over the systems and you just improve it, and you know it needs to be more stable, more performant, more robust, like all of those things. And then you've got balance to worry just... about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. going to be a whole new challenge. What could possibly go wrong there? <laughs> Is he he's using just, the engineering building there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's using the engineering building. So that's like one of the things we do in our game where you don't need to build a, a factory for land units every time. You can just do other things if you wanted to. One of those other things is to build an engineering unit building because, uh, you know, you decided that uh, who needs units? I'm just going to build buildings, right? And the advantage of it is it builds quickly, but the disadvantage of it is, is it can't move. So... There yeah. you go. So that you was can that. See, um, we've got different things in different places, like all those, you know, the trees and props from the, the other one, from that forge map, they look really good. When that's here as well, that will make everything look good. There's things missing here, like the tarmacs underneath each building um, really make things pretty. Did we have scorch marks now here? It seemed like we did uh, before. Uh, we have a yeah. few scorch marks, but um, they're just sort of the placeholder ones. And uh, again, you know... It's just... We yeah. just have different things in different places. Half the content needs to be imported. Half the VFX need to be imported. All that stuff. But you can see, you know, like the the car is disassembled and it's all over the floor. But you know, you can see what it's going to be. But we started the engine, right? Like it's just we got the we got the we got it to spin, right? Whereas before it was like, oh, we got like a random tire over here. Like <laughs> where where where's the cage, right? Like where, you know. Like half of it's not there, but now you can kind of see the parts of the car starting to come together. Is yeah. that everything then, Brett? Yeah, I think we're done. That's that's a that's an update for this this time. Yeah. So guys, if you do want any more info, please come to our Discord. But also, if you just want to help us and support us, you just come to the Discord. It really does help. Please. All links yeah. will be there... below in the description. Once again, guys, if you want yep. Discord, Patreon, or Kickstarter. So go down there and check that out. And awesome. if you or somebody you know is interested in uh, helping us out, you know, uh, get owning a portion of the game, owning a portion of the company, talk to us. We've got some fabulous investors who've uh, really taken this from the next to the next level. So, Gal, you mentioned you didn't expect us to get this far. Well, neither did we. <laughs> And it's thanks to the investors that we did actually ramp it up because we started as a team of just six. Now we've got closer to 20. And, you know, we just started as a bunch of people who are working for free in their free time. But now we're a full on professional company. We've got all these people working full time. Yeah. Um, it's just really jumped up a level thanks to the investors, which came from a girl video, I believe. So <laughs> That's true. Got, who's the real MVP, really? Well, uh, I wouldn't go that far, but I'll take yeah, it nonetheless. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> so if we if we get another investor, just like we got from the previous Garvid... Yeah, uh, really I think what we've up. shown people is that we can do this, we just need time. That's all yeah, we yeah. need. Um, uh, this is going to happen. It's just, you know, will we have a year to spend on it, or five years to spend on it, or will we have 10 devs or 30 devs? Uh, we need time to make this work and to do the, some of our stretch goals, like, you know, the shattering of Earth, the freezing of the water, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we need time to do that. So, And it's not going to happen without um, more money, whether that comes from the Kickstarter or from um, investors. The thing about the Kickstarter is that um, the world is kind of a little bit anti-Kickstarter at the moment, and that's just not going to go well unless there's a good demo to see yeah. uh, better than this. Um, that's kind of the, the problem. So we've had to um, slow down on that front. We're going to wait until we have a compelling uh, demo, not to convince your audience, but one to convince like the Steam audience, which is a different thing because they're a lot more fussy and demanding, and they they. Ex they don't need a finished game, 
but it needs to not be a, a clunky, which this yeah. is. This is pretty clunky. So we need to get all that fixed up, and when it's done, we're going to launch the Kickstarter. We're also going to launch the demo on Steam, which will get you know another <laughs> half Island a million views. views. <laughs> <laughs> another half a million views. But this time, all those people are going to click the you know the install button. They're going to see it, play it, have some fun, and then when it comes up with the Kickstarter button, lots of those people are going to be driven to that. So that you know has a good chance of getting a good result. But um, we need to get there. We need time to get there. And it would be a massive disservice to everything that we've done so far to launch Kickstarter right now. Yeah. It would just be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're waiting. You know, it's, it's sort of um, slow and steady wins the race uh, kind of thing. We're just, uh, you know, not rushing this out, making sure we do it right, making sure we do right by the players as well. Good things come to those who wait. Yeah. Other stouts are available. Uh, guys that is fantastic I think we're going to wrap it up there but thank you so much for joining me can't wait to get another one of these out in a couple of months or whatever it is that you deem you've got enough new content to show us all thank you once again and thank you to all of you guys for joining us uh, this is Guile9 and Bread signing out